I V M. Welcome to Dreaming with Your Eyes Open. Ronnie Scrivola is an entrepreneur who I have admired for a long time. His ability to make inroads in an industry that is so tightly controlled by a few was what first had me so impressed. When he released his book a few years ago, I lapped it up. I was even more impressed. The more I discovered his journey and the various businesses he had been a part of, the deeper my admiration went. When this project came up, I jumped on it wholeheartedly. Where else was I going to get the opportunity to spend so much time discussing the ins and outs of his career and what he has accomplished? On episode 7, I talked to Rani about inflection points and how they affect growing a company versus scaling a company. Hi Rani. Hi. So, uh this chapter you start off with the quote where I'm quoting from the book, inflection points need to be pursued. Look around the bend, spot trends and set the bar high and build a team and a culture focused on scale. Tailwinds come from hard work, preparation and a willingness to seek out and take advantage of growth opportunities. So you say inflection points need to be pursued. Can you expand on that a little bit? What do you what what well, do you mean by that? Well, twofold. I think one is the fact that I think in India we really don't think scale. We hit our glass ceilings very early in life, mm-hmm. then start moving sideways. So that's a double whammy on the negative side. First you hit a glass ceiling and a glass ceiling is supposed to be broken but you don't. And then you start diversifying into random areas whereas actually you should be focusing on how to break that glass ceiling and take it to the next level. Right. Second I think the market in India is one of scale. Hmm. We're a price sensitive market but we're also and you know whether it's an FMCG or whether it's in hailing a cab price is a very important part of the India consumption story. Right. and therefore the best answer to combat a good price and the scale mm-hmm. and i think therefore understanding your market understanding the size of the market is very important okay. so i think when anyone is starting a business growing a business in a business staying in a business you need to understand your market size and normally what you do is the sandbox becomes quite small and becomes quite evident mm-hmm. and you obviously need to figure out what's the larger market right and how you define your market itself is a first step so okay. i think those words are supposed to to resonate all of those things right. that you need to think big whatever you're thinking in terms of the uh, the the um, the market and the and and your sort of a square you need to look at it outside of that mm-hmm. and yes that's going to require a lot of hard work right uh, because it's going to get you to zoom in zoom out mm-hmm. think a little differently so how how would you identify an inflection point though i mean like i mean like what are the kind of things that you would look for in uh, you you're saying that inflection points need to be pursued right yeah i mean i i get the pursuit part but how does one identify what would be considered an inflection point but that's i think the first part is really understanding that what i've defined as my market yesterday right. if i were to sit down there and force myself to look at the market very differently mm-hmm. how would i look at that right okay and i think that's really those inflection points inflection point is one way you're looking at a larger size of the market mm-hmm. on one side but you're also looking at opportunities within your organization or your core competence which can take it to the next level right so today if we're in an online education like we are an upgrad mm-hmm. and if i'm looking at the inflection points for me and i'm in a particular space uh, of uh, post graduation i think there are multiple inflection points that i would need to look at okay. whether i look at um, is this the age group or how do i start socializing people onto the entire medium of online right. to go forward so i think it's multiple ones but mm-hmm. i think inflection points in your business come to you on a almost I would say monthly basis. Okay. All right. So during the course of this chapter you talk about building a company, growing a company and scaling a company. Yeah. You talk about all three of these, right? So building I think is fairly self evident. That's when you're first starting out and when you're first trying to build something together. How do you identify the difference between trying to grow your company and trying to scale your company? How how would you say that's those Again, are Again, it's not a standard definition. I think sometimes a, a a major part of that definition actually comes from team and people. Mm-hmm. You know, and just at that line of oversight when you have most of the people how your direct reports is the time i think when you're building your company right and i think when that kind of starts being a multiplier effect mm-hmm. and they're going to be teams of people where you need to find that the team that works with you are now going to be individual leaders on their own right is the starting point of you building your company okay. if i look at it from a people mirror right I can look at it from the consumer mirror mm. and I can say what's your inner circle of your consumer the people you got in the first time and how do you get them to be a repeat customer or how are you looking at a geographical region so right. that inner circle outer circle and growth of a company could be I'm operating in one geography and I now look at a wider geography I'm looking at a consumer base and I'm looking at a different price point right. but I think the simpler one is as you're growing the team and you now need to look at it like I've outgrown my initial startup team or they now need to be leaders mm-hmm. uh, of their own because they've got 10 people reporting to me that's the time in which you're starting to grow the company right. scaling i think is really the 
Well, let me not put it that it's the most difficult part because that actually at each stage, that is a very difficult part right. because actually starting the company is in itself an extremely difficult part because that's the time when your base and knowledge is low, your experience is low, and the problems that hit you are quite binary in nature, which can shut you down or keep you going. Mm-hmm. And you have different problems when you're looking at scale, but most of them are not ones which are binary where right. you'll be shut down overnight. But I think the scaling one is the most difficult primarily because you need the complete buy-in of your entire team. Right. If you have a vision to scale up your company, but the, but the team is not in, in league with you and right. not, not in line with you, you're not going to be able to succeed on that. And that team could be a team of 30 or a team of 300. Okay. So another quote that you have, which I thought was kind of interesting, ambition leads to sacrifices. You can't have one without the other. Can you give me an example of what you would consider to be like a sacrifice on the altar of ambition? On the altar of ambition? I mean, yeah, I think, well... <laughs> It's not one of your personal sacrifices. Right. It's not one of time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, I, I'm and guessing therefore you I would choices use the word, which the to me is, yeah, but I think choice is a very important word. We right. use it as a very, we use it as an adjective and uh-huh. not a noun. Right. But if you start putting some gravitas to the word choices, pretty much everything that you decide on is really the choices you're going to make. Right. And that requires a very different, and most people think, you know, as an entrepreneur, I have a gut feel. Mm -hmm. But that gut has come because you've worked on it, you've done a lot of homework. And if it's not an evolved gut feeling, the probability is that you're making a sort of a very uh, uh, ad hoc decision. Right. So I think choices is really the one where I would put down the core of it. Okay. In this chapter, you speak quite a bit about your initial UTV deal with Z, right? I mean, like when you did the idea, uh, when you had the internal goal of doing 10 shows, 520 episodes, how fast were you able to execute on something of this nature? How did you kind of get people on board? How did you kind of make that happen? So I think I wouldn't go narrating that because I think it's it's a case for everybody. Okay. When you're looking at taking an ambition and saying, I'm doing going to do 10x of that, right. The couple of things have to be there. A massive opportunity exists. Right. And if you don't do it, somebody else is going to do that. Mm-hmm. So that's something you need to understand. What is that opportunity and whether you can execute on it? Right. The second is, it how is it going to change the face of your entire business, your mm-hmm. company, your ambitions and everything else? And right. to me, those were very important ones. Mm-hmm. Then you get to the cho- cho- point of no choice. Right. Mean, if this is so important, critical, then you will put it out. So mm-hmm. anyone who thinks I have an opportunity that I can grow 10x, mm-hmm. now how I'm going to do about that, then that's one part. Right. Yes, then comes the most toughest one because all of this has got to buy in, but you've right. got to execute on that. Right. And I think leading from the front, getting into the absolute eye of detailing, mm-hmm. bringing team members on and planning and planning and planning and planning, but not planning as a top-down business because everyone needs to have that very relaxed way in which they feel that they have a buy-in on everything you're going to do. Of course, right. But execution is as much about planning mm-hmm. as it is about getting up and getting on your feet. Right. It's not about rampantly going out there and saying, let's do an 18-hour day and burn the midnight oil. You might be burning midnight oil for all the wrong reasons. Right. So I think a lot of pre-planning, mm-hmm. a lot of clear-cut responsibilities, a lot of buy-in, mm-hmm. and everyone having a buy-in that if we manage to do this, what's in it for everybody? Mm-hmm. And what is it... For some people, it's a learning lesson. For some people, it's a different repertoire. For some people, it's an element of scale, whatever that may be. Okay. You went to a team size of five, uh, in, in the book you mentioned, 500 people were working on these 520 episodes, right? Correct. In terms of getting that yeah. out. And just earlier, like a couple of, I think uh, a couple of chapters earlier, you had mentioned that at the early part of your, your team was 30 people. Yeah. So to go from 30 to 500 people, right? I mean, like, how do you... Yeah, and that I think is very, very important. In today's day and age, I've seen a lot of people where every time a new fundraising comes, they're mm-hmm. saying, I'm hiring another thousand people. Right. And I don't want to make this sound similar to those ones because I think this one is... Firstly, the structure for us was the 520 people were coming onto the projects. Okay. If I have to get to 520 full-time people, I would have thought of the whole thing very differently. Okay, all right. But when you look at something which is project-based... Mm-hmm. There's a sense of hunger that you maintain with the team. Right. And there's a sense of high accountability right. and a sense of a start date and an end date. Right. And therefore, that gives people a very clear purpose. Okay. But they also don't take things for granted because they know there's an end date to something. Right. And they need to do it with that in mind. So I think when we scale, I think the accountability... And the consequences of not performing on your accountability go a much step higher okay. if you've got them on a project basis than on a full-time basis. Oh, uh, I want to ask one last thing before we end this chapter. You talk about brand and its importance in creating scale, right? I mean, like the UTV brand was an iconic brand or is an iconic brand. So, I mean, like, what are some of the reasons why you think brand is so important for creating because scale? Because it's elementary. I think where does scale come in? 
scale can only come in with a context of repeat mm-hmm. okay where people are coming back to you right you can't really build scale by every day you're finding the next new customer or the next new million customers you know so you, so and you're not going to be able to build that unless you built a brand right. so a, a real scale comes in from a sense of a regular customer base mm-hmm. that gives you that sense of word of mouth that's going to give you the respectability the credibility for you to go forward and the multiplicity effect starts and therefore brand is most important because without that you haven't built credibility you haven't bought a built a built a repeat customer right and you really that's a stepping stone okay all right great i think that's a good place to stop this episode thank you very much ronnie thank you Hi, I'm Ronnie Sruvalam, and uh, you've been listening to my podcast and the multiple chapters of my book, Dream with Your Eyes Open. And I think to that, I've had good chats here, and I think Chapter 13 in my book is all about Q and As, and I'm sure there are more Q and As. Happy to answer them, so send them in, and happy to have a dialogue with you on that. So, if you'd like to ask Ronnie a question, send it to us at dreaming at ivmpodcast dot com. If selected, we'll read out your question on the last episode and have Ronnie answer it. You can also send a question to us on social media at IVM Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Did you know that Parsis in Mumbai instead of being left at the tower of silence after they die are now cremated and why because a cow fell sick in the early 1990s did you know that the smog in delhi is caused by something that farmers in punjab do and that there's no way to stop them did you know that there wasn't one gas tragedy in bhopal but three one of them was seen but two were unseen did you know that many well intentioned government policies hurt the people they're supposed to help Why was demonetization a bad idea? How should GST have been implemented? Why are all our politicians so corrupt when not all of them are bad people? I'm Amit Verma and in my weekly podcast The Seen and the Unseen, I take a shot at answering all these questions and many more. I aim to go beyond the scene and show you the unseen effects of public policy and private action. I speak to experts on economics, political philosophy, cognitive neuroscience and constitutional law so that the insights can blow not only my mind but also yours. The Seen and the Unseen releases every Monday. So do check out the archives and follow the show at seenunseen.in. You can also subscribe to The Seen and the Unseen on whatever podcast app you happen to prefer. Hi my name is Anupam Gupta I'm B50 on Twitter I am the host of Paisa Paisa the show that talks money on my show I speak to experts from every field of money and finance from stock markets equities debt funds credit cards life insurance every possible area of money and finance that you can think of we even did an episode on cryptocurrency I've got fantastic guests from mutual funds to personal finance experts everywhere robo advisory startup just name it we've got it At Pesa Pesa, we help you make smart decisions about money. You work hard for money. Now make your money work hard for you. New episodes out every Monday, and you can listen to my show on the IVM Podcast app or any other podcasting app that you have. Pesa Pesa is brought to you by Paytm Money. 